Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Zal. Over the past few weeks, we've been covering some of the more influential and massive class changes arriving to the 1105 PTR build, which currently doesn't have a release date, but should be arriving sometime soon. And this week in particular, we took a close look at the more changes coming to the class of the mage, with them potentially trying to make Living Bomb a little bit more consistent, but also some of the bigger updates arriving to the class of Monk, whether we're talking about the mystery of our adjustments with some brand new gameplay and talents, or even more refinement with the hero specs regarding the Windwalker spec. However, this week in particular, we also did see a number of other class changes from Druids, Warlocks, Warriors, Rogues, and Hunters, specifically talking about the Dark Ranger. But all of those changes are more on a smaller scale that I kind of want to combine together in one singular update. So, Today's video, I really want to take a look at all of the other class changes that we didn't get to cover for this most recent PTR build. As always, if you guys want to see more regular class updates like these for the War Within expansion and future updates, be sure to follow the channel and subscribe. But otherwise, let's dive into what's happening to all the other classes over on the PTR. So one of the classes that we haven't got to talk about in a while from the last PTR build has been the Balance Druid, which saw a lot of changes couple of weeks ago them and restoration dudes in particular but this week they're doing some more tuning and balancing with the talents and even a removal of a talent that the community have voted and gave feedback and it's good that they're at least listening to some of that feedback bounce of all things is brought back up in power 10 and 20 percent critical strike chance increase whenever you uh enter into an eclipse this was previously 8 and 16 percent depending on how many town points you put in but 10 and 20 percent makes it even better and more synergetic with astronomical impact so boomkins should have a fairly sizable amount of burst damage they could do every time they enter an eclipse new moon and half moon from the new moon or full moon play style both got buffed up with new moon by 20 percent and half moon by 10 percent which may have some synergetic value with Elune's Chosen, which is already a pretty popular choice. The Town of Rattle the Stars did take a little bit of a nerf, with its damage increases reduced from 12% to 10%, but I also think it does slightly make the other Town of Star Weaver a little better, which provides you free procs of Starfall and Star Surges, which actually can synergize with things such as Hail of Stars, which can grant you Solstice, and that can synergize with a couple other damage over time talents, such as Umbral Inspiration, which actually saw a bit of a nerf as well, from a 35% damage increase down to 30, just doing a little bit more tuning further, but this challenge can actually be probably very very good with some of the newer talent options and choices they've done for balance druids to promote a more damage over time based gameplay speaking of dots circle life and death however has been removed which is probably going to stifle that dot based gameplay but i think this is where waning toilet is now that's where circle life and death was or maybe further down. I don't remember exactly where it was. It was one of these two talents before. But they mentioned that the talent of Circle Life and Death can create a rotation that can be sometimes frustrating, especially in AoE, since Circle Life and Death is very similar to that of a Restoration Druid Circle Life and Death. And by Restoration Druid, I really mean Feral Druid, because Rusted hasn't had that talent for a bit. But Circle Life and Death causes damage over time effects to deal the damage in 20% less time. And your healing over time effects get a partial value bonus for it. So your dots would essentially just tick out quicker. This would also work for things such as Starfall, which allows its full raw damage to happen in a much faster time period, leaving it at a burst to your state. But it also means that you would, in AoE situations, spend more time refreshing Moonfire, refreshing Sunfire on every single target, and not nearly as much time using all of your other combat abilities, so that it would create a pretty frustrating AoE rotation, as they mentioned in the blue post. And after further playtesting and reading feedback, they weren't happy with the possibility of players who don't enjoy Circle's playstyle would still feel obligated to take it because of all these other talent combinations, as I mentioned before, that has some synergy with a damage over time based gameplay. So they decided to remove it entirely and hopefully balance Druids will be tuned accordingly to compensate for this removal because it was a pretty strong talent, but it would have created a lot more issues than it needed to. And finally, in this last PTR build, they also buffed up Lunar Calling a little bit more where lunar calling now increases starfire's damage by a hundred percent instead of 80 percent from there we got even more dark ranger hunter changes which is a very exciting hero spec that's getting probably one of the best revamps we've seen so far for the 1105 update so they added a couple of changes in order to help tune dark ranger but also bring up its power for beast mastery specifically like Dark Ranger's Bleak Arrow ability, they changed it where Dark Arrow can now benefit from Bleak Powder once per cast, which means it's going to have a little bit less uptime within AoE content. Also, gaining the buff of Withering Fire now properly grants you Death Blow, which means you'll get a lot more Black Arrows out during your big burst window. 
The talent of shadow daggers has been nerfed in this damage by 90% by the looks of it. I guess the talent was doing a decent bit of damage when you were to disengage throwing shadow daggers at targets, but maybe hunters felt like, wait, it's actually a bit of a damage buff if we were to get up close and then disengage in between. So they nerfed it by 90% to make sure the dark chains and shadow dagger are as close to each other in damage as possible. Also, the black arrows damage over time component is now exclusive per caster. It was no longer a dot that could be stacked with other hunters, which is one of those unintended mechanics. So it's good that they solved this issue before it came out to live realms, because that could have been bad pretty badly. They also buffed up Bleak Powder a little bit in terms of its size. They made sure that its visual size and conal size have also been increased to make sure that the ability gains quite a little bit more value overall. As for Beastmaster, Hunter, and Dark Ranger, we're actually seeing some nice bit of sizable buffs overall, like their interaction of Beastmaster, Hunter, to the Withering Fire capstone ability. The way the Withering Fire works for the MM and BM is quite different. For Marksmanship, activating True Shot activates Withering Fire at the same time. During Withering Fire, if you were to gain a death blow at, while under the effects of Withering Fire, you instead instantly fire a black arrow at your target and two additional black arrows at two nearby targets at 50% effectiveness. So basically transforms this activation of having to press kill shot or black arrow into more of an automatic ability where you kind of want to try to generate as many activations of death blow as possible. However, for marksmanship, you get to use this during your true shot windows, which means it just happens as soon as you pop your major cooldowns. But for beast mastery for a while, it's been after casting four beast shell wraths, then you can enter into this surrender to darkness withering fire stage, which means for Bia, that burst is quite delayed and they're changing it so withering fire stack aura is now being increased to three minutes for beast mastery so as you press beast show wrath you get three minutes of withering fire so you can't lose out on its uptime if for some reason you're not getting enough of beast show wrath procs also the changes so after three beast show wraths it's not showing up on a tooltip appropriately but after three beast show wraths is when you're supposed to be able to get your withering fire proc but it just seems like a tooltip thing, but on beta, you can actually test out this new modified faster version of Withering Fire that you can execute a lot more easily, which does feel a lot burstier. It's weird that Beastmaster has to play around a ramp up time with their Beast Show Rats, which you think is going to be a little, maybe potentially kind of awkward in some PvE encounters. But at the very least, they are trying to speed it up even a little bit. And with some of the other changes to Beastmaster, how to play style, how they're trying to incorporate some of the other spells and abilities, not just, you know, ignoring Cobra Shot as much as humanly possible, the spam and Barb Shot and Kill Command the entire time, they're at least trying to incorporate some new abilities in between. But I think the additional damage you'll be able to get without Withering Fire, I mean, Black Arrow by itself is just significant amounts of damage overall, though. Besides this, for Beastmaster Hunter in particular, Bleak Powder damage has been increased by 100%. And as a spec that's been usually kind of behind when it comes to AoE content, it's good to see that at least they're looking out for their AoE damage ahead of time. Also, a pretty huge buff towards Shadow Hounds if you do choose to play Shadow Hounds instead of some like Soul Drinker. But if you play Shadow Hounds, apparently Shadow Hounds will now have a Beast Cleave for them for their entire duration. So not only do these pets deal pure shadow damage, which is a decent bit of damage, and you can summon them pretty regularly every time you summon a dire beast, because there's a 25% chance to summon a shade hound when you summon a dire beast for BM specifically, but now they will also be able to cleave all targets around them, which is also really, really good. And I think it makes some of these AA Wii play styles potentially fall back into Embrace the Shadows, where you'll heal for a portion of all shadow damage done, and since those pets deal pure shadow damage and they cleave, that could potentially increase your overall passive survivability though i don't think it'll be enough to replace smokescreen which is super super good as a bonus defensive with that additional use of survival of the fittest during exhilaration then we have the class of subtlety rogue or rather the spec of subtlety rogue and you really should keep your eyes on this one in particular rogues in fact are going through a number of good changes subtlety in particular is going to be able to get benefits from those but they're also now changing the way that subtlety plays within pve content so previously they wanted to change up the timings for subtlety since they no longer have the one talent over here with shadow dust that gives them cooldown reduction on vanishes which can be huge within pve and pvp content as it allows you to bring your cooldowns back a little bit faster. For PvE like raids and dungeons, this allows subtlety greater control of major cooldowns such as flagellation or shadow blades. But with the removal of shadow dust, it does mean that subtlety is going to be in a bit of a weird spot in terms of being able to shift around its cooldowns and they want to be able to support the playstyle of you being able to be more flexible with your CDs on subtlety. So they want to maintain it without giving them cooldown reduction 
and they're doing it through shadow blades previously they made flagellation a one minute cooldown where shadow blades was a two minute cooldown so that they lined up together better so sometimes you had a mini burst every minute and big burst every two minutes but they're apparently changing flagellation back to a 1.5 minute cooldown and instead what they're doing is taking shadow blades and also changing that to a 1.5 minute cooldown which gives subtlety a three minute burst window or rather a 1.5 minute burst window but it makes him essentially a three minute class where for shorter fights where there are burst windows where an enemy let's say gets a big damage phase where every 1.5 minutes they are susceptible and take additional damage from other sources or maybe there's an empowerment player mechanic going on like smolderon for example from the last raid tier that's where subtlety is going to be able to utilize that shorter shadow blades and shorter flagellation of 1.5 minutes to deliver some fantastic bursts but if there's a fight where every three minutes you need some kind of big burst damage to get through a boss's phase, Subtlety still has the cooldowns to basically be effective every three minutes, but also every 1.5 minutes at the same time. Which gives him some huge flexibility options, but it also gives him an opportunity, let's say the boss is going to be, let's say you have all of your cooldowns available in a boss fight, but the boss is going to be phasing in 30 seconds. So you can actually delay those cooldowns by 30 seconds to make sure you're hitting that 2 minute profile instead. Which does mean you're having to hold your cooldowns, but subtlety being such a burst based class, it's a lot better for them to sync the burst during key moments and key windows if they can get greater benefits out of those windows. So it gives them quite a bit of flexibility without properly giving them cooldown reduction back as a gameplay mechanic which some players are going to love and others are not going to like it nearly as much but it's a pretty big shift in the cooldown usage for subtlety and subtlety is all about cooldowns literally managing cooldowns is a huge portion of your gameplay because rotationally they're not that complex cooldown management is kind of a big thing and being able to give them a 1.5 minute cooldown profile i think is interesting and gives them a niche that separates them from assassination which is a two minute class in particular also they wanted to buff up subtlety even more so the talent of death perception that gives them multiple charges on symbols of death can also increase the damage effect on symbols of death Normally, Symbols of Death grants you 10% damage increase, but depending on how many talent points you invest into it, it either gets 3% more damage or 6% more damage. So every time you use Symbols of Death, you deal 16% more damage during that burst window, and you have three charges of this ability. So talking about cooldown management for subtlety is actually kind of nuts of a spec. It's really, really, really exciting time to be a subtlety rogue, especially with some of the rotational implications that you get with Symbols now that you have three stacks of them, and the Rotten, which gives you a bunch of extra calm points to work with. This gives you a lot of potential ga gameplay that you can really squeeze out out of the spec of subtlety there's a lot of things happening for the spec in particular and they're just doing it through a handful of talents but this is probably going to be one of the burstiest specs in the game from there we got the class of warlock which i actually failed to mention a couple of weeks ago but apparently destruction has got a couple of new things not only them but also affliction with a one simple change since they've been working through and going back for some of the uh, Shadowlands talents and Shadowlands covenant abilities, they've actually been going back and updating some of the uh, icons for a lot of those abilities to make them less Shadowlands-esque. So for the ability of Soul Rod, which has more of this like malevolent feel about it with nice and purple magic, instead of it being blue, now it has this like same icon that represents the actual ability effect to be more Warlock-esque rather than Shadowlands-esque which I think is a nice upgrade. The majority of Warlock changes come down to the use of the Diabolus playstyle and changing it for destruction in particular, but changing the way that Diabolic Ritual works for this spec. Normally, Diabolic Ritual would proc off of your soul shards and function with your soul shards, but for destruction, there's a couple of reasons why you can't do that. But first, they change Diabolus a little bit, so all procs of Diabolus that are reset before a dungeon, before an arena, battleground, or a raid encounter, so you can no longer cheese the Diabolus anymore. But for destruction in particular, they wanted to change the way the Di Diabolic Ritual works, because previously, like I said, it worked off of soul shards so the faster you can spend your soul shards the faster you can advance the diabolic ritual for destruction however they ran into a couple of problems because there's multiple ways that destruction warlocks can spend their soul shards chaos bolt rain of fire or shadow burn and the more soul shards you can spend the quicker you can spend them the faster you can advance through all of your diabolic rituals summon up all these powerful demons and getting the use out of all their bonus abilities However, this created a multitude of issues for Destro because players found out that pretty early on too in the alpha and beta, actually I think it was specifically beta of this expansion, that you can actually advance the Diabolic Ritual a little faster, not by pressing Chaos Bolt, which costs two soul shards and forces you to stand still, but you can actually do that with things like Reign of Fire, which isn't an ideal ability for single target damage, 
but it's really efficient at churning out soul shards. Normally, Reign of Fire is a three soul shard ability, while Chaos Bolt is a two soul shard ability, but you can cut down the cost of soul shards needed for Reign of Fire by one with Inferno, so both of them will now cost two soul shards. One of the abilities is now a hard cast ability that you need to complete a cast all the way through. The other is instantaneous. That's it. You just sent out Rain of Fire. You just advanced to start a Diabolic Ritual. And if you can get yourself more Rain of Fires to immediately proc Diabolic Ritual, then you can advance it even faster. So then you had Destruction Warlocks maintaining the buff of Pyrogenics, which you can maintain at all times with Rain of Fire. And maybe even sometimes playing around Shadow Burn, especially when enemies are low on health, because it allows you to use a Shadow Burn to consume a Soul Shard, but then you can do so instantly again and again and again on low health targets, so you can turn to Soul Shards even faster and be more efficient with that Soul Shard churn, which also allows you to achieve Diabolic Rituals even quicker. So you created a situation where you weren't really using Chaos Bolt as part of your main gameplay, just because it was slower at generating rituals. So the change in Diabolic Ritual to no longer function off of Soul Shards, but rather the uses of Chaos Bolt, Reign of Fire, and Shadow Burn specifically. This becomes a lot more important because of the talent called the Touch of Rancora, which now reads, Demonic Art increases the damage of your next Chaos Bolt, Reign of Fire, or Shadow Burn by 100%, and reduces its cast time by 50%. This helps out Chaos Bolt because the faster cast of Chaos Bolt means you can more efficiently get yourself through your demonic ritual gameplay. Also, casting Chaos Bolts now reduces the duration of Diabolic Ritual by one additional second. Whereas Reign of Fire and Shadowborn both reduce the duration of your Diabolic Ritual by one second, your Chaos Bolt does it by two seconds instead. So even if you have to stand still for the ability of Chaos Bolt, it is still becomes a little bit more efficient at reducing the duration of your Diabolic Ritual which is prime use of why you'd want to use Chaos Bolt because now it becomes better at the whole cooldown reduction mechanic. So this way they're able to reintegrate the ability of Chaos Bolt back into the core of the rotation of destruction, which, you know, not having the ability be part of the core has always been a little weird. I did for a little bit enjoy the change of gameplay and change of pace for destruction where you just run around spam running to fire. Like it was very unusual, but also very, very different. And made Destrum, which is normally a very not mobile spec feel extremely mobile where you just run around spam rain of fire at literally everything around you that being said it probably was not really healthy for the spec to go in that direction not healthy for the game as well and there's a lot of talents that play off of chaos bolts that you would just end up having to avoid because it just wouldn't play into this no new rain of fire based gameplay so overall it looks like it's probably going to be very very healthy for destro it makes sense for them to try to buff up chaos bolt as much as possible in terms of how it synergizes with diabolist and hopefully this will be enough to fix the original issue that they had with this whole rain of fire versus chaos bolt as part of the diabolist gameplay we are still in PTR, time will tell, more tuning may potential will need to come out in order to make the playstyle a little bit more consistent, but we'll see how things progress over the next few weeks. Now another buff that Diabolus saw is when it comes to your Overlord gameplay. The Overlord is a pet that's of the melee variety, but apparently they gave him a new alternative way to use his abilities, even if he can't really reach the target. So for example, if I position myself against a trained dummy on the far side, where none of my other uh, demons will be able to reach the target whatsoever, apparently the Overfiend is not supposed to have an alternative damage attack, where normally Overfiend, it is Overlord, where normally the Overlord would try to, there's way too many demons, normally the Overlord would try to find a way to charge towards the target and then slam him with his big old axe cleave ability, but if he can for some reason reach the target, apparently he's supposed to have an alternative way to deal damage that's equivalent to that of his original axe slam that's meant to do about the same amount of damage and this is what it looks like i, I don't did he did he actually do anything uh or maybe it doesn't work <laughs> i'm not really sure does he do anything is it supposed to be throwing his axe i think he's meant to be throwing his axe in that situation but i don't think it's connecting as of right now i see the fell seeker i see a renation i see chaos mother but i'm not seeing his actual attack in the process okay so maybe they've got it kind of sort of working or at least the ideas of it working but it's not fully implemented just yet. That or is just not functional as of this moment. Finally, we have the class of Warrior, and actually some of the hero spec changes that come into Warrior are being pushed to live realms a little bit earlier than expected. So the changes specifically, such as the buff to Arterial Bleed, as well as the buff to No Stranger to Pain, both of those are actually being pushed to live realms to try to make Colossus a little bit better for arms and Fury Warriors. 
There's also another nerf to Slayer that's actually also being pushed to the Live Realms, with things such as the Overwhelm Blade stacks are being uh, reduced from 12 to 10. Culling Cyclone also has its damage bonus for Bladestone further reduced, actually reduced further than what is available on PTR. And with the Talent of Opportunities, they're also reducing the crit damage and crit chance of both of the abilities affected by this, depending with your arms or fury. So it looks like some of those hero spec cha changes that I initially want to talk about, that I plan to talk about for a bit, those are all coming out to Live Realms a little early. So what is left over then? Well, actually some buffs for Fury Warrior, with both Rage and Blow and Bloodthirst seeing a significant damage increase. Rage and Blow buffed up by 25%, while Bloodthirst buffed up by 30%. However, neither of these abilities are affected by the talent of Reckless Abandon, which transforms both of those abilities from Bloodthirst and Rage Blow becoming Crush and Blow, as well as a Bloodbath. So all of those abilities are only buffed up in their very, very base versions. And that is to help promote a playstyle that is actually the, of the opposite of Reckless Abandon, that is the anger management build. Where Reckless Abandon is a playstyle that's focused around burst, where Recklessness generates your rage, and every time you rampage, it empowers you next to Bloodthirst, or rather your next Bloodthirst and Rage and Blow to be more powerful versions of themselves, which gives Fury Warriors a very solid burst window that can be activated every time they press a rampage ability, but with how they can cleave with other abilities, with the uh, whirlwind mechanic and how they can strike multiple targets, that can help, help them set up to maybe save resources until that perfect rampage, activate a big cleave with a bloodbath as well as a crushing blow, which could offer some terrifyingly big AoE damage, and gives them a much more burstier profile, where they don't need to have nearly as much uptime over a boss to be able to output as much damage as they normally would be able to. However, Rack Anchor Management plays around a sustained base build where you're focused around building and spending rage as quickly as possible. The faster you can spend rage for every 20 rage you spend, you will reduce your main cooldown of Reckless's Bladestorm and Ravager. The whole point of Anger Management is to basically be in Reckless's as much as humanly possible, where with this mechanic, Reckless's is a burst cooldown that can be used during key moments. With Anger Management, Reckless is something you want to use as often as possible and be in the reckless a stage as much as humanly possible. This usually would synergize with talents such as Umbrella Ferocity, where Recklessness can also be extended every time you rampage, though this has been nerfed significantly. But then there's also Depths of Insanity that gives Recklessness slightly longer duration to try to help maintain Recklessness as much as possible. So by buffing the base damage of Rage and Blow and Bloodthirst, they're actually trying to make anger management a little bit better. But this means you'll have to probably have some talent commitment potentially in the other two talents to make this one a little better, which is controversial in its own wake. But it's also doubly controversial because actually Actually, a lot of players have been playing Warrior this season so far. We prefer the Reckless Abandoned playstyle much more. And as of right now, Anger Management, they feel like would not really fit the current setup in the current Season 1 meta. Because Burst so far has been a very, very dominant thing that's really made Fury stand out from other specs because it's kind of like their bread and butter, but that is the only thing that really keeps them strong. Not sustained damage, not single target damage, but Burst damage in particular, especially Burst in AoE content, is really has become the niche of Fury Warriors, and I think a lot of players want to be able to maintain that niche for as much as possible. Plus, there's also preferential gameplay, with many players really, 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 really enjoying the burstiness of Reckless Abandon, which is also a ton of fun. So it's going to be interesting how the tuning will come out for this one, but it seems like they, what they're trying to do with Fury Warrior is a little bit, it's a little against the odds of what the community wants to see out of the spec themselves. But with everything being said, as always, I do want to thank all of you guys so much for watching this update and hope all of you guys enjoyed. If you did enjoy it or found it informative, go ahead and give it a like. I would very, very much appreciate it. Join our Discord community to keep discussing all of these upcoming class changes that are arriving with the patch 1105, which will hopefully have a release date very, very soon. But also, let me know all your thoughts in the comments down below. And as always, I'll see all of you guys in the next one.